Is analog dead in 2025? What's the best budget analog goggles? So this really got me thinking. So is analog worth it in 2025? Because if I have a look at the prices, let me clear this so we can get this off the screen. And I'm gonna jump over here on DIY FPV. So if we come over here, have a look right here. So if I go to FPV equipment and let's hook, have a look at some analog goggles, the options for analog, I feel like are getting less and less and less. And if we look at some of the prices, I don't know how much it is worth it moving forwards in the future. There is one part when I'd say, yes, it's absolutely worth it. And that would be if you're just getting a ready to fly kit, like as a gift, if you're maybe like, you can't afford anything else, you want to just get a little whoop kit, have some fun, are analog goggles probably going to be up your alley? Yes, because you don't have enough money to break into digital and use that. But if I'm looking at some of the prices of these things, so look here, we've got some EV800Ds, nobody I don't think in their right mind, like, okay, Fat Shark Scouts, $200. These are top of the line goggles, so $450. What do we got here? Some Sky Zones, $500. Some, like, these are about, about as cheap as you can get without going like really, really, really low budget. So right here, we've got some 800Ds. There is like $60 pairs. And this is usually what comes, here we go, this pair is like $50. So right here, this is sort of what I was using with the Draknite kit. I don't think now, unless you are using Whoops and you are going like for a cheap pair of goggles, analog is not the way to go. That doesn't mean analog is like not worth it at all because maybe going to Whoop Racing, you want a really, really high quality pair of goggles. So maybe you're going to be going HD zero, maybe you're going to be going a top of the line pair of sky zones. Like that option is definitely not budget. And those people are choosing that for a specific reason. However, if we jump over here and just have a look at say digital systems, I should be able to search these up. Okay. So if we're gonna have a look here, the these goggles, these are $200. So again, this is moving up to digital and it's only like another hundred dollars difference. and this is where I have to say, moving into 2025, we just saw the prices that we have of those old analog goggles. For me, this is becoming more and more compelling on a system that I want to jump into. And especially like if we have a look at, they're not out, oh, actually they are out in some places. The N3 goggles from DJI, now it has to be confirmed what air units those are going to work with. But if they are compatible with the O4 DJI air units that are coming out, they're like, we had a look at this last week, $230. So. On the FPV side of things, if you are looking in and you want something cheap, unless it is a gift, it is real like for someone else to try and just have a bit of a play with and you're not expecting them to upgrade anywhere in the future. It is really, really difficult to go past what the current options are for digital look. I don't know what you guys think out there. What would you spend your money on? You're coming into the hobby in 2025 and uh, you're looking to get in cheap. And I mean, not... Like when, like the question was best cheap goggle. So that's two hundred dollars. That is cheaper than some digital options, uh, than some analog options out there. But you're getting the benefits of digital. So I don't know. It's very, very hard nowadays to recommend a good cheap analog goggle when we have such compelling digital options. Now that doesn't mean digital's dead. I'm not saying that at all. The only two reasons why I would probably get analog today is if I want to fly whoops and uh, I am really, really into like, I, I, or, and, and I'd probably get some expensive goggles if that was the case, or I am absolutely broke. I cannot afford anything else but a ready to fly kit. And then I would be getting uh, an analog system just to try it and have fun. And I don't expect to upgrade in the future, but we'll see what other people, what other people are saying as well. I've hung on to my analog goggles for long range flights. Okay, that's a really good option as well. Um, I guess it depends how long you're going to be doing long range because if you're flying around analog, it can get some crazy VTXs and you can get some really, really good long range. And I prefer how the breakup is, but you're going into a bit of like niche specific reasons on why you choose analog. And the, probably the best way to think about this is you're coming into FPV in 2025, what goggles, what systems should I get? It really all comes down to what do you want to do? Do you want to fly around for fun? Are you going to be going to like proper five inch races? Do you want to go to whoop nights? You're just going to be flying around whoops indoors. Do you just want to cruise around the park and not annoy people? Do you prioritize best picture? Do you want to do long range? Like 
the activities that you do should dictate what system you want to buy into. So that would be uh, my number one advice. Write a list because I'll tell you the truth right now. And this is no spoiler. Any other reviewer or YouTuber or anyone else who has tried this will tell you there is no one system that does everything best. Like a lot of systems do different things. I think some are better than others. Some are more expensive. Some are cheaper. Others have a lot more limitations. Um, it's just... What do you want to do with your goggles? So for me, I got to say, I really like Walksnail in its current state, but that with the current competition, but that might change when we see the O4 Air unit come out. Now you might be saying, hey Stu, what is it? What is it about Walksnail that you like? So like I've got this pair right here and believe it or not, I actually like flying with my uh, goggles L sometimes more than these. It sort of depends on what mission I'm going to do. I do need to replace these antennas on here. Yeah, someone's saying, agreed, different tools for different jobs. Yeah, absolutely. And if it's all about fun, think about the sort of flying that you do. Now, for me, I specifically like this pair of goggles or the Walksnail system. It's got a really good picture, in my opinion. It's not as good as DJI, but it is pretty close. Uh, and I know Stickman Steve actually prefers Walksnail. I like the, probably the biggest one, we get some great little 1S kits, so a really, really, really small little form factor. I can put that in like the Lightning V2, scream that around and have an awesome time. So that little form factor with a good picture is why I like Walksnail. But it seems like DJI now coming out with the cheap goggles, so the N3 and a very, very light air unit. It's going to be a very, very competitive we're gonna we're gonna have two pretty compelling options right there it just really comes down to how small is that air unit can i fit it in a lightning v2 can it here's my lightning actually right here i was just pulling some dvr off this uh like two days ago if i can get a small dji system in here well then it's a much much tougher choice but you gotta you don't have too much room it is still a very very tightly packed little space in here so time will tell definitely hopefully going to be testing those in the future